ancestors. So, okay. we'll so uh, hello everyone. Uh, now we will talk with uh, Mr. Cory Doctorow. Uh, he is uh, one of the four authors of uh, probably the best blog, or maybe it is directory uh, on the internet called Boing Boing. Uh, he will tell us more about his work, not only at the Boeing Boeing website, because he is involved in different projects. Hello, Corey. Hi there. Uh, please tell us something about your work at Boeing Boeing. And, uh, I know that Boeing Boeing is really tremendous blog. Uh, you you uh, don't, like, uh, don't like to call it blog. You say directory of wonderful things. And, uh, that we call the blog. Call, you call, yes, but uh, you don't have comments on the blog. It, no. is, it, 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 is, it was one of the issues in the online world that you, uh, you disabled uh, commenting yeah. because of probably lots of spam or... Uh, trolls. Trolls, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, please tell us about some statistics. I mean, you have really tremendous statistics and... So, I, I don't really have any great statistics. I mean, going, the, the thing about internet statistics is that they're works of fiction. So I can tell you that we run AW Stats, which is a standard stats package yes. on Boeing Boeing. It is and, it and, it, and it's what everyone uses, and it shows 450,000 unique users on a good day and 380,000 unique users on a bad day. What does that mean? No idea. We run that on a monthly basis, and we get 2 million unique users per month. What does that mean? No idea. But, I like to say we're the most popular blog on the internet called Boeing Boeing. Yes, but, but uh, I mean, uh, it has some uh, thing for advertisers, for example. Yeah, well, so we, we report to advertisers what page views their ads get, but again, fictional numbers. Numbers generated by trying to count something that's inherently uncountable. Yes, uh, uh, different, different uh, statistics show different results. Yeah, those are the numbers we give to advertisers, are our raw AWs. Yes, yeah, so you have uh, more than 3 million uh, RSS readers. I mean, when no, not anymore. We don't use that number anymore. We, uh, that was... Um, uh, Blog, uh, feed burner was giving us that number, and then we looked into it, and it wasn't right. So we don't have any idea now where our RSS numbers are. We think it's like, you know, we've done some metrics of our own. We think it's sort of like four or five hundred thousand a day unique. But RSS yes. is even harder to yes. measure than web uh, uh, pages. Can you can you share your secret for your success? If there is any secret, I mean, you you started all early, and uh, yeah. you, your your strategy were that you link interesting places, so mm -hmm. other people will link back to you, and that's why you have six hundred thousand links on the internet. Is that what we have? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, huh. So. It's, I, mean, I guess, you know, I think that it's hard to say what the secret is. I think that, um, I like your question on the paper. You said, what makes you so powerful? I was going to say I was bitten by a radioactive spider. Ah, yeah. but, but, um, <laughs> but I think that what we do great, what we do well, we, have, we, we pick stuff that's pretty interesting. Um, and of course, lots of people can do that. And we write about it relatively well. But I think the thing that we do that most differentiates us from other blogs is that we... Um, attempt to invest our blog post with what Bruce calls the attention conservation notice. We try to make you know as quickly as possible whether or not our blog post isn't something you want to read. So our headline always tries to reflect the content of the blog. So you never get a headline, rarely get a headline on Boing Boing that's like, this is so funny. Uh -huh. Because when you see that headline in like a page of Google results, and there's you know 10 items, and this is called, this is so funny, you have no idea what it means or in a list of alphabetically sorted RSS feeds from 3,000 sources. This is so funny, is a meaningless link. So we will write a dry, boring, descriptive headline, and our first sentence will try to tell you, so the, the headline should tell you what the post is about, the first sentence should tell you more about what the post is about, the quote should tell you everything that's on the page that we're linking to. So you should know, before you, before you click the link on Boing Boing, whether or not you're going to be disappointed, yes. and if you are disappointed, you shouldn't have to click the link to find that out. And I think that more than anything, this has actually served us in incredibly good stead because it means that we're a lot more findable than everyone else. Yes. And being more findable, I think, is the secret to this stuff. Um, so I think that's a big part of what we do. I think that there's a, in, it, we all, in online writing, dream of being newspaper writers. And newspaper writers can write the craziest headlines, right? You know, the San Francisco Chronicle on September the 12th, 2001, the day after the attacks, their headline, bastards. Right? And then a picture of an airplane crashing into a building. You can put that on the head of your 
uh, on the front page of your newspaper above the fold and put it in newspaper boxes and people who walk by the street will go, I know what that story is about, I'm going to put some money in the newspaper box and buy it. If you make the title of your blog post, Bastards, no one will ever see it except for the people who happen to look at your web page during the 10 minutes when it's on your web page. Mm -hmm. And no search engine will ever find it for them, no one will ever click the RSS lead, People who forward that to other people by email, those people will never open that email. It is essentially invisible. You have made yes. that post irrelevant. So, the world. so your point is that uh, title should be uh, as much descriptive as possible. Yeah, yes. that the post should be as descriptive as possible. Yes, that cleverness should always take a second backseat to this. That said, the thing that's guided my selection of things that I put on Boing Boing is that it all seems to me to be things that are pieces of a puzzle that I don't have the box for, so I don't know what the picture looks like. Yes. And so I find these pieces and I put them on Boing Boing, and writing about them in this way, distilling them into a couple of lines, putting in a quote and so on, makes you remember them. It's like it, publishing an idea is like having your mom come over to your apartment, you have to clean up, right? You can't just, you can't just throw it out there because it won't make any sense to anyone else. So if you keep notes for yourself, they're kind of sloppy and you know they're very, they're very terse, they're in a kind of personal yeah. shorthand that you can't even make sense of five years after the fact. Whereas if you publish everything, it becomes incredibly mnemonic. You remember all of it. Yes. And so um, you, you assemble these pieces of the puzzle, and then every now and again you find a corner instead of blue sky, and then the whole puzzle sort of assembles itself. So I wrote a novel last year, a 100,000 novel, paid word novel in eight weeks. That was really research intensive, but I didn't do any research because I'd done all the research. It was on Boing Boing. Without knowing it, for years, I had been researching this novel on Boing Boing. I had all the pieces there, neatly arrayed for me, searchable, uh, with ad additions from my readers and, and lots of other material, and I could, in just a few clicks, recall all that research, pour it into my novel, and finish the book. Yes. And, and so that's been you know, sort of my ethos in figuring out what to put up there, is it's all the things that I want to keep track of in my life. 